All right, guys, so we're back on part two, continuation of the uh, commentary critique of the uh, Boykins Recreational Campground. So let's go ahead and dig into this and continue where we left off. The journey continues. I'm trying to make it seem like a really dramatic saga. So, yeah, this is where it just continues where I left off. and I'm just kind of going down the creek. See how I put my hand there? Right when I stepped over, I thought about that strategically as I bent over. Grabbed it so that the shot would look seamless. If you go back and look, you can see where I started to turn around in a second ago. So, coming down the trail, I found a little lagoon here. Now here I am just kind of explaining stuff. Again, it, like I said, this is pretty much, you know, not really thought out. And, uh, you know, so... Now the music I chose to use was not anywhere near planned. I just kind of shot this scene. I wandered in this pool, didn't know how I was going to edit this or what to make of it. Give a little thumbs up there. I'm just kind of... Now I kind of twist right here and I'm thinking about bringing my camera in the pool. So I try to make it seem like the camera was there the whole time. Try to give that seamless transition between the scenes so it doesn't look like it's cut. But anyways. So yeah, the water was a little chilly, but not too much. And I was a little insecure about what the heck was in this water. I was like, am I stupid for getting in this water? I don't know what the hell's in here, but... So, if you don't know what this music is, it's obviously the music from Predator. The very first one with Arnold Schwarzenegger. When I watched this clip, I thought to myself, Oh man, this looks like something out of Predator. Like I'm being stalked or hunted, right? So that's where the music idea came from. So it kind of just flowed, and I put it in, edited it. I edited the video according to the music, like the jump shots here and all that stuff, where the music cuts or bounces between different uh, beats of the music, and then I cut the scene to it, and it worked out well. But it looks like a jungle out there. When I watched the video clips I made, it had that feel to it. So... Again, this is another pool that I came across, and I was a little sketchy about getting in there. You can see I'm like, I figure, what the hell? Is there something in here? It's it's the only thing. The worst thing that can be in there would be a snake. That's it. I mean, I knew that was the worst thing that would be in there. Um, I was a little nervous about maybe you know twisting my ankle on something, and I didn't know if there was like a big drop, you know, like maybe if it was ten feet deep. I didn't know how deep it was, so I walked really slowly. But this scene coming up here. Um, I was kind of a, you can see I'm back there, I'm trying to see about how I'm going to get out of this hole and how I'm going to get my camera over here. So I'm thinking about how the hell am I going to get my camera through this deep water over here without it getting ruined. And uh, I kind of start walking back. And uh, this is where I come in with my, I thought about this as I was out there, I said this would, this would look cool and kind of silly on camera. Obviously I don't look like anything tactical, but I just wanted to kind of make it look like that with the predator music like I'm being hunted by the predator I'm a huge I'm 38 years old in case you're wondering so I you know grew up with movies like that predator lethal weapon and all that stuff and Steven Seagal and aliens and uh, yeah this was a pretty cool little tunnel I wanted to kind of give a transition as if I'm walking through it in one shot then I come out, and then I'm exiting the tunnel. See, these are the things you have to think about when you're making a film. You know, you got to think about your edits and your cuts. And even though you're not planning the shot, when you're there on scene, some of these ideas just come to you. And you're like, oh, I can do it like this, or I can make this cut, do it like that. Here I am trying to figure out how to get the hell out of here. I did not want to slip and fall. Uh, I'm not a very nimble guy, and I was like, this is wet and slippery. And... Um, this one, this one was pretty sketchy. I didn't know what was in this hole. I'm contemplating if I wanted to go any further. But uh, I just had to keep pushing through. But see, I almost I almost bit the dust. I tripped on a root that was in there. So just more walking. In case you're wondering, the editing program I'm using is Windows Movie Maker. It's a free software download, and it's very... Um, intuitive as far as doing some really cool edits with it. It's not as good as like Adobe Premiere and all those other fancy ones. It's a very simple program to, to as a beginner program to edit and get yourself more complex edits than what you get on a basic phone. 
because some phones you can edit with. Well, this is a nice shot here. This was a beautiful scene. It was really lush and green. But anyways, yeah, so the Movie Maker is a really good beginner's editor. And uh, you can put music, um, you can edit really seamlessly. You can obviously record narration, which I'm using it for right now. Yeah, this is a man-made structure, um, kind of like a levee that's holding back the water. It's, you know, the lake water, kind of like a, a man-made dam, and then it just spills over into the creek. It's like, I guess you call it a spillway. I think that's what it is. I think it's a spillway. So when the lake gets to a certain height, it spills over and it comes down this man-made rock structure, which is pretty cool. You can see this scene right here. This is where I'm talking about. You put your, I'm, I'm rinsing my hands. See how I, I repeated that in two shots. So it looks like there's two cameras, but there's only I only used one camera the entire well, time. As you can see, we made now this scene here. This is a disclaimer. I kind of said walk. that I walked. I don't know. I think I said at two miles, mile, three miles. To be honest, but, uh, as a disclaimer, yeah, I've literally I walked maybe a quarter that. mile. I wanted to make it, you know, seem like it was a little bit more dramatic, but, you know, whatever. So, this is my disclaimer, my secret that, uh, yeah, I only went like a quarter of a mile. And uh, this is actually uh, the next day, if I'm not mistaken, or like maybe an hour later after I got out of the creek. I don't remember. So, yeah, here's the spillway. It was just a beautiful scene right here. That back there was the lake, obviously. And, uh kind of zooming in. I wish I didn't do that. It, it, it looks silly. Here's more of a landscape shot. Again, here's a, here's the benefit of a pan head, a fluid pan head. A really good fluid pan head that has dampening oil in it, so you don't have any of those friction vibrations when you're panning. See how smooth that is? If you don't have a, a fluid pan head, please get one. It'll make your videos a whole lot better. It's really critical to have smooth shots. It keeps the audience engaged. It doesn't look it doesn't look um, unprofessional. It doesn't look amateurish. I don't know what I was trying to do there. I was just looking like I was staring into the lake, like contemplating life and thinking, here, I, that looks stupid. I didn't like that scene. I used it anyways. This little guy held still for a while. I'm actually surprised he didn't move. So, this was literally all the dead wood I could find in this area. If you go to this area anticipating right, well, it's been a long uh, to finding so wood, there is none. Going here. I'm gonna try this new none at all. Company. So, but I managed to find the little pieces, pieces of scrap wood, so, and for today's cooking, I guess use the jet boil. I'm just so kind of explaining what I'm about to cook. That boil. shit was nasty. Uh, it really was. This. I got this sample pack, uh, this creamy this pasta. So this looks pretty good. I, I think the problem I had was that uh, a test and all. I didn't Eat cook it long enough. Know what I think just, about it was like crunchy and just it just, oh, it tasted gross. I don't recommend buying this crap. I mean, if you're going to go out there camping, dehydration meals are good for backpacking, but if you're car camping, bring some real food. That was... I don't know if I ate anything after that. This was kind of a sloppy shot, trying to show cooking and stuff. This was done really sloppy. I wish I should have done this better. See, when I go back and watch my videos, I'm, I'm my worst, my worst critic. And, uh, yeah, that actually did smell very good. It smelled good, but it tasted yeah, like ass. Hungry. Not that I know what no ass tastes like. It, just, it tastes gross. I need to believe that. That was good to say. Oh yeah, it's good. I think my water's but, um, oil. So let me go ahead and get this ready. Yeah. I think I should have boiled it while stirring it. I kind of turned the heat off and just let it soak in the hot water. I think that was my mistake. I should have kept boiling it while... I should have cooked it like pasta boiling it, instead of just letting it sit like that. Yeah, then it started to rain, obviously, and that's where I had my, uh, All right, so the rain has my, uh, the camera lens is that's the reason why I set up that tarp better, earlier. So do this real quick. I wanted the tarp to be tight, to be taut, wood and the reason is you don't want water to cool up in a certain done, section and then cool create a big mess and that I got sag your tarp. That's why started. it's critical to have your tarp so extremely taut and tight, so you don't have, uh, it got really humid out there. Okay, let's get this done. So I process some wood down so here. This is some of the wood that I managed to process. And over here. I should have filmed it, but you know, like I said, it was raining. I didn't get as much footage as I wanted to on this trip. Found some tinder. You know, just talking about my fire. Some primary burn here. Man, this I don't know what kind of wood that was. Looks like some kind of oak. 
It was really just steamy after that. After that rain hit, it just right, got so really nasty. The humid let me out see there. What the clock bell looks like, and we'll see if we can get this fire going. All right, what so am I doing? Oh yeah, there's my pocket bellow. Kind of if like you don't antenna, own this pocket bellow, it's thirteen dollars. This thing is is awesome, incredibly awesome for getting your fire going, especially when you have uh, when you're at a state park and they have those uh, iron pits. You know, with those, it's hard to get your face in there close. This is a telescopic, almost like a. Uh, so car antenna fully extended. and it worked out really well if you don't own one of these i seriously recommend get getting there one get some air to the fire to help it's a lifesaver it really concentrates so your breath going. and just blows so much oxygen into that the fire stand. that um i mean right there that's i got it roaring with that it was just brilliant i suggest getting one anyways i'll get off the pocket though so i'm not sure why it got dark the exposure and the focus is see my camera's hunting for focus because it's dark so as you can see, i'm using my sony noise, slt 33 kind of it it's a, a translucent it. mirror camera kind of like a dslr but a hybrid here i am you can see i'm using that pocket bell see you see how it helps it really makes a huge difference because you know that that pit was at least a foot and a half deep. I mean, there's no way I would have been able to blow if I didn't have that pocket bell on. There's no way I would have got that fire going as good as I did. Yeah, see the exposure, the camera, it's so dark. This is where I, you know, when you have afterthoughts and you think about when you're making your videos and stuff, you know, obviously the next time if I did a scene like this, I'd have a light in the background to help illuminate more. Because the camera's hunting for focus because the light's so low, it doesn't know what to do. Here I am just throwing everything in there i figured i'm gonna go to bed here in about an hour why not make this thing as big as possible <laughs> here i threw this massive log in there and it burned extremely hot i had to stand back at least 10 feet it was so hot i was pleasantly surprised by my fire this is b-roll footage i got off the internet this is not something i recorded it did lightning just like this but my camera couldn't pick it up so I kind of hunted around for free B-roll footage that looked exactly like this. This is exactly what it looked like that night. And I just got lucky by finding it. This is just something I found, again, on YouTube. Just free B-roll material. Copyright free. Just of the moon going by. Here's some slow motion of the fire. I just slowed down the video. With Windows Movie Maker, you can actually uh, slow down the video for any kind of slow motion. It just it adds a very dramatic kind of draws you into the scene when you use slow motion but you can't use slow motion everywhere here we are the next morning i got pretty drunk the night before so i had a headache when i woke up right here and uh i don't know what i was thinking here i was just recording myself i didn't even feel like waking up but i knew i had to record well good morning yeah I yawned here and then I thought to myself if I'm yawning I bet my audience is yawning with you then I'm like did I get you well so it was a long night. how long do I lay there I'm so sore I'm watching this video for the first time again uh, and commentating so I didn't really watch the video then decide how I'm gonna commentate I just kind of looking at my video through my own eyes thinking about what I would have done differently that cot sucks it really so sucks in cold weather that cot is terrible because you've got convection air going underneath it so you lose a lot of body heat in that cot and um, during the summertime it's great it's it's a great piece of kit to get I would not recommend it during the winter time because it elevates you off the ground unless you've got like some kind of I guess a mat or something like that to help insulate you um, it creates convection airflow which is basically you know air going underneath it in the kitchen cold here I am just making coffee showing some transition shots between the coffee and this scene here that's just my coffee press I use that a lot that's my primary means of making coffee that was a cool shot there all right guys well that's it that Pretty much does and it. Here, and here I am. I didn't really know how to end this video, with my thoughts on it, so I just kind of talk about, you know, it's a very nice area. It's only $6 how I felt about the park uh, and everything. 
Sometimes I do scenes like this in just uh, one take, uh, mainly out of laziness, but sometimes I wish I could go back and re-say what I said, you know, like a script. And, uh, I had a but I don't like to do scripts. I like to be very natural. Of the parks uh, I when visited, I'm talking I would to the camera, sometimes I'll script uh, myself and edit and go back and repeat something if I'm, no you know, doing a review kids, or something like no that. But usually water. when I'm out camping well, and recording and stuff, no none of this stuff is planned. Um, I don't plan any of these so shots, even though they come out looking seven. quite so well. Being said, I do have some thought into what I'm doing because I've been doing it for a while now. Till we meet again. Here I am going off. This is what my wife hates. She hates it when I show my license plate, but who the hell is going to come after me? I mean... I'm a nobody. I mean, what the heck? No one's going to come to my house. And st I don't have, like, fans that are going to stop me. So I think this is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoy this commentary. Catch you guys on the flip side.